It is the year of our Lord, 1020 CE. For over a thousand years, the Exusian Caliphate has ruled the world of Cretu. Ruling by fear and fanaticism, all bend the knee before the Church and their ruthless enforcers. The dreaded warrior brethren of the Holy Templar Order. For generations, a fearful peace has settled over the world. The people obey and the Caliphate provides. But now malevolent forces beyond human understanding begin to stir in the dark corners of the world. War is coming. I am a master of the Templar Order. I am called here to the forest of Slakartvia. I am beckoned to this place by ugly visions and a vo It draws me here. There is something hidden in this place. The old man is an emaciated skeleton, his clothes and beard are caked with dry blood. I dismount and cautiously approach. He's offering something to Meechman. No sooner than handing me the parchment, the old man crashes to the floor, and then fades from this world. It's a map of a nearby settlement. This is what I'm here for. The heathen who did this. I'm riding again, deeper into the wild. I'm close now. I can feel it. I am the hand of God. Here. A ravine. I dismount. I draw my pistol and descend. Hello everyone, Shadefire here, and welcome to the start of this playthrough of Countryside. A standalone prequel level for Trenchfoot, which is an in-development mod that I took a look at back when the demo was released and was pretty impressed by. But, this is sort of a different kind of tone than Trenchfoot, whereas that is more of a, a standard kind of action-y Doom level, or mod. This standalone level is a bit more slower paced and survival horror-y, with more of a focus on resource management than just blasting. So, I have actually played through this level once already. I had intended to record that playthrough, but uh, I ended up not actually starting the video side of the recording, so I ended up with just a commentary track again. So, we're going to be playing through this. I think it is definitely worth checking out a second time and kind of showing off. I think we're going to break this up into probably two episodes because the original playthrough took me about an hour and 40. However, I did pick the wrong difficulty as it seems like I should not have gone with Way of the Templar as I actually ran out of ammo at one point so badly that I had to cheat to get through a section. There's a really rough section towards the end, or not rough, but difficult section. So I think we're just going to go Unholy Incursion for this playthrough for simplicity's sake, because not every Doom mod has to be ball-blisteringly hard. But this is a very atmospheric and well-done map. Alright, so, like he said, there's a ravine here and we hop down. According to the old man's map, I'm not far from that small homestead. I must be on my guard. The locals won't be happy to see me. So Trenchfoot has a little bit of a, a Warhammer 40k influence as it is, and this one definitely seems to be kind of leaning towards the chaos stuff. But yeah, we've ended up in this forest, this very good-looking forest, with nothing but a revolver and a sword. Uh, the sword 
not very good if you're out of ammo, it turns out. There's certain enemies you can use it kind of effectively on, but I found that it was getting me killed. And also we have the boot, but we have the boot no matter what we have equipped. Now, it looks like, as I had hoped, they've already added a chain sword to the main mod, so I am looking forward to being able to hack up, you know, demons with a <laughs> chain sword, but for now all we have is this regular sword. Inferior. So right off the bat, we have a secret tucked away in here. And this will get us the breech-loading shotgun. With all some shells. There's also health here, but again, like I said, we're going to need to not waste any resources if we can help it, especially when it comes to health and ammo. Which I guess is two out of the three resources we have, with the other one being armor. The way is blocked. There was someone back there. You can see we don't actually have a auto map. We just have the sketch the old man gave us. But we start off in the clearing area. And this map isn't so large that you get lost. But it's definitely larger even than I expected. We need a blue key to get through here. I like there's just squirrels running around. Looking pretty normal. I think it has a, a red pixel for an eye though. But I love the way this whole forest area looks throughout this mod. It's not the only environment. Okay, so not much else we can do in here right now. We'll have to leave shade behind until we make our escape, which is the horse. Alright. Uh, either someone got real hungry and stripped down this dog, or... This is some kind of sacrifice. Well, there is a man hanging up there, so that seems a little more relevant. What was that? The taint of chaos is definitely at work here. Bullets. But yeah, I found on that higher difficulty, the enemies are just a little too tanky. So you end up burning a lot of ammo, and I think you are meant to use the sword more. <laughs> Too damn quiet. I mean, we could have just come through here. I'm not sure what that sound is you make whenever you try to search something that isn't anything. Because, you know, it's like the uh, uh, uh sound, but for us, it's like... Got some effigies here. Kind of look like mandrakes. Mandrakes with little bandanas. So much detail in these environments. So many different little sprites for everything. I'm really looking forward to Trench Foot. I hope it's not in development for too long, but at the same time, I, you know, kind of hope they take their time with it. The one thing I found a little odd in this is I find that the art style for the weapons is a little... It doesn't quite line up with the art style of the actual map. I feel like they're just a little too stylized, I guess? So we got this big ol' clearing here. This is the place. Looks deserted. Uh, the frame rate's a little bad here. I don't know, it's just so large that it gets a little chuggy. But, I don't know. I find that I still get that even though I have a decently strong PC and I'm running this in Vulcan. That certain very large areas, like the biodome in Ashes, tend to chug the frame rate a little bit. that stretched human skin for sale? Hmm. Looks like they didn't do enough scraping on the back. I can't tell if this is like a cultist market stall.
You got this here, which is actually a loaf of bread, though it's a little hard to tell. I kind of thought it was some, like, nut or something. <laughs> or a peach. The way is blocked. The way is shut. I cannot get out. Need a yellow skull to activate the switch back here, but it's good to know that there is a switch back here. We'll need to keep that in mind for later. So yeah, you really want to scrounge around as much as you can for ammo in these environments, because you're going to need it all later. So, right now, while well, we're more or less safe, it's better to pick up all the bullets you can and keep note of where all the health packs and stuff are. So I think we're almost maxed out on revolver ammo. Okay, so nothing we can do up here right now. That's another place we'll have to come back to later. This chicken, uh, aside from looking a little drunk, is perfectly normal. Not corrupted. Not mutated. The actual countryside itself seems pretty healthy. I mean, obviously it's like autumn, but... That's the natural kind of decay. And here, again, the cultist market stall selling peppers. Alright, so here is the farmstead itself. Doesn't really seem like anyone's home. And you can't open the outhouse. The pig just looks so, like, happy and rounded. Like, that's a very kind of stylized pig. The gone hog. Foul beast of muck and filth. I mean, that's a little ominous. Anytime someone has twisted serpents as their, like, heraldry, that's probably an indicator that something is up. Unguarded. Something's wrong. I expected violence. Where are they all hiding? Get some meat there. Of course, you can just eat some meat from this rotting cult house. Okay, so we have a blue key here. That triggered a checkpoint. You know, red skull. So we can't explore the house yet. They are sending out the call. Nothing hidden in the pond. Now, there is, however, a well around here. Somewhere. Yeah, there it is. If we go down the well... Thankfully there was water there to catch me. Actually, I don't know if there's fall damage in this mod. But... Looks like we got a, a lot of stuff going on down here in the well. Probably not the best place to drink out of, considering all of the bones and the corpse piles. And it's probably not the safest drinking water. I 
can see there's a ledge up there, and we can't get up there right now. So it's just another thing to keep in mind. And it looks like there's more ammo down here that we can't carry. 90 is our max capacity. All right, let's head back up. So we got the blue key, which means we got to head back to the clearing that we came in from, which is this way, I think. Yep, towards the effigies. Follow the path, and then we head into... Oops. Head into the woods over here. Infidels! I bring you your just punishment. So these guys with the, the sides are the ones that you do not want to try and sword. Because they will mess you up. The other guys, though, they throw their hatchets at you. So, they're also not really someone you want to stand around trying to stab. Definitely want to hold on to my shells as well. Get out of here, squirrel. This guy's up. Proper blood fountain. Stop that. It's unnatural. Alright, got pretty messed up there. Down to 37 health. This is where we came from. So, yeah, you have to be pretty careful in combat in this mod, or in this map specifically. I remember being a little more durable in the. Demo. That's where it came from. That's also where we came from. Oh, okay. It's a little hard to tell what you could walk through and what you can't in this forest. go over here. What is this place? Hmm. Some sort of subterranean catacomb. Well, at least he looks like he was having a good time up to the end. Also, there's just a little funny thing here. Blasphemy. Compare the size of this head to the skull here. This one had a very large head. But we'll still eat this foul meat down here, and I'm pretty sure that's straight up the eating sound from Return to Castle Wolfenstein. I remember that sound well. Okay, one of them has a gun. I'm also not sure what language they're speaking. I'm pretty sure it is an actual language. So we gotta watch out for those guys too, because they have shotguns. We only dropped one shell though. Hmm. This is a shrine? Man, they throw those knives really quick. A lot of force behind them.
I mean, with the enemies that don't throw shit at you, you really can use the foot to keep them at a distance. Keep blasting them. Alright, I got 3 health, 39 armor. Doing great. And this is the difficulty down from the one I was doing before, so you can imagine how much trouble I was having on the higher difficulty than this on my first go. Okay, we're not getting back out the way we came. I find it's a little unfortunate that you never pick up another map, because I feel like with the way they set this up, it would make sense if we would find a map in the level and it would replace this one. But... There must be hundreds of bodies down here. Lord, protect them, carry their souls to heaven. But what if these are all the bodies of heretics as well? <laughs> Harvested by a cultist. Okay, that doesn't put us too far back. However, I can actually manually save as well. It's not like saves are disabled. Maybe we can get through this room without taking so much damage this time. I don't know, like, I wish the the throwing weapons were a little slower, so you could actually sidestep them. Alright, as long as I don't get shotgun blasted by this guy, I should be alright. Because that's where most of my health went last time. <laughs> is that I just stood there and slugged it out with him. Oh man, look at all the little worms. They're having a field day out here. Just frolicking in the blood. But man, again, this stuff all looks so good. He really went. This Templar's got a strong boot. I'm gonna save here. Uh, what is this called? Countryside. Actually, should have called it CS1. So I have a, a decent idea of where I want to end this. Oh, that's what killed me last time. There was. One of these guys running around. I think there might be a few enemies up top as well. That's why I was trying to run over here to get in cover. This looks a little bit more like some of the trenches we saw in Trenchfoot. I wish there was a flashlight though, because some of these areas are really dark, so like a lantern or something would have been great. I'm trying to remember what that switch opens. It drops a ladder down somewhere. I thought it was like right here, but I think it might actually be the next one over. Sometimes you really just have to shoot for the eyes, and that's why they have helpful glowing green eyes. That must have opened the way. And I think that also let the guys out upstairs. I think that guy just had a regular pistol, not a shotgun. Some health over here. That might have been the door that the switch opened? I actually don't know. Oh, great. <laughs> Stuck on the ladder. Got a crouch. I was too tall. Mm. Hold on. Is there something 
behind this guy? No, it's a candle. It could also be that this is darker than intended, because I have it set to dark light sector instead of doom light sector. I really need to, like, make a, a list somewhere that just tells me what light sector the readme tells you to switch it to. Because not all of them do tell you, but some of them do. And I tend to forget. These are no mere godless upstarts. Something more is afoot here. Something far worse. Now let's see what they're hiding in that house. Hello? I think they're above me. Some of them are fairly sneaky, though. Like that cultist that reaped me. Okay, we can jump across one of these areas, I think. Because otherwise, I don't know why you'd be able to get up there, and I can't remember if I figured this out. Because I'm already going at max speed. I like look at the wall and see if there's a stone sticking out that I can jump on. How much darker is this if I switch it? Because if it's going to be too bright, then I won't switch it, but I guess it's worth checking. Eh, it actually doesn't really make a difference, so I think this is fine. It also doesn't tell you how many secrets are in this, so I don't really know if there are a lot of secrets. I mean, obviously we found one at the very start. I kind of remember there being like a, a series of rocks we could jump up. Making sure there's no ladders or anything I'm missing. Alright, we've made it back to the well. Now we can climb out. And deal with these guys. Kill that man and take his bread. I like how the pig is just still calmly wandering around. Yeah, crap. So this part, I remember being kind of tough, because there's a lot of them, and I was kind of low on ammo. Also, you can't, like, kick immediately after slashing, so that's why I'm not, like, comboing them. You can see it kind of stuns them for a second, though. But it also knocks them so far back that you gotta chase them down. So it's better, I think, for the pistol to use the knockback. So I'm almost dead. That's kind of what I expected. This guy, I remember these fucking scythe guys have ridiculous range and lunge. You do not want to let them get close to you at all. Or they'll harvest the fuck out of you. There's another group over here somewhere. Well, I say over here. They were over here last time I played this, but... I think they can be anywhere around here. Just gotta find them.
Hmm, sneaky. Unlike the scythe guys, the pitchfork guys are not very quick to attack, so you can actually just kick them. And the shotgun guys, as you can see, can survive a blast from the shotgun, pretty much always. Okay. So we are going to want to heal up before we go investigate this house. Because you don't want to go in here with low health. We're going to have to grab all the bread and stuff that we saw earlier. And then we're just going to have to be a bit careful. So I'm going to turn off auto run. Because I find that it actually kind of screws you around in tight quarters like this. What are they doing here? Definitely a motif of eyes going on here. There's that same painting again. Some kind of a root creature with a demon at the top. Oh, and a bunch of skulls full of maggots. And maggots falling from the ceiling. Pleasant. I shot the shit out of myself last time I got here. This is the devil's house. I was just waiting for him to take a shot. I like that though. You walk up to this mirror, you're like, oh. You get startled, you go close to it, and then a guy pops out behind you. Like hiding in the pantry up here. Awful lot of bookshelves for a farmhouse. Those guys don't look too different from us, except with the cape or the Inquisitor's hat. <laughs> Got some good spooks in here, too. This gives me kind of the feeling that maybe Trenchfoot will have a little bit of that, like, fear vibe. You know, where it is more or less still an action-y shooter game, but then you'll see spooky stuff that you can't do anything about. This is Satan's hand at work. This is hell. Nor are we out of it. It's still so funny to me that we have like this house full of rotting corpses, but it's like, ooh, meat. Oh, look, we got a skeleton under the floorboards. Might be Harrison Ford.
and we've got a uh, back hallway completely full of bones. So many bones that we're forced to walk on them. A lot of people died <laughs> out here. So say hello to one of the nightmare enemies. This thing flies through walls and it hurts you if it gets anywhere close to you. It does an AoE of damage. Also, there's that thing. <laughs> Which also does AoE damage. Yeah, so you can see there that trying to walk past it killed me because it just has like this death aura. Which normally would be fine if it wasn't for the fact that we're trapped in a tiny house with it, where it can just melt you. So I, I wasn't so keen on the actual execution of this part. Especially because, as you can see, you have to try to avoid triggering both of them at the same time. First we want to kill the little shadow monster. Because it's easier to kill. I think I got it. They're not too tough, but again, because they're flying through walls, they make it tough to take them down. This thing, however, this thing eats bullets. Initially, I actually thought this thing hurt you simply by looking at it. Like it was doing madness damage or something just by acknowledging its existence, but no. It turned out it was just from getting close. What in God's name was that abomination? That hideous eye, it called to me. And that girl, that witch. I've seen more than enough. I must escape this place. Time to head north. I must warn the Caliphate. So yeah, that part I got stuck on for a bit when I was playing on the next difficulty up. Because that creature is tough. And it took a lot more shotgun shells than it did here. The horns are ringing out once again. I think we got all this meat we could eat on the way out. But we got the yellow key. So now we can head back to that other pathway we saw. Except we're actually going to wrap up the first episode here, because that was about the point I wanted to get to, is once we fought the Abomination. So we will continue Countryside in the next episode, where we should be able to wrap it up, unless I get really stuck. But until then... You folks all take care.